It's a Broadway show and we're back with another great one. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Mr. DeMille, she's ready for her close-up. After winning a Tony Award for playing Cher, Stephanie J. Block is taking on another diva, faded screen star Norma Desmond. It's the concert presentation of Sunset Boulevard at the Kennedy Center. But if you can't make it to D.C., not to worry. We caught up with the stars at rehearsal. Here's Paul Wontorek. Stephanie J. Block, the Paul. greatest star of all. <laughs> you are a, a humble, talented actress who has taken on these diva roles. I mean, yeah. we actually just got to see you in Into the Woods, where you got to be every woman. Yeah, but yeah, now, we're, every woman. now we're back in share mode. Yeah, right? a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, just yeah. jump back in. Yep. Back into the star mode. Yeah, it takes a posture, it takes a, a confidence, but the beauty of this confidence is. It's just fueled by so much insecurity and so much doubt and, um, you know, when you hit a certain age, as I have hit, that sort of underbelly of Norma, I think is very real for me as well. I just wanted to really make sure she was always human, even though it will hit all of the marks of yeah. theatricality and over the top. Um, she has a mental health issue, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. something caused that. Yeah. There's something real that happened. and. In talking to Sammy, I said, I would like to hope that if there was the right medication or trauma therapy in the 1930s or 40s or 50s, this story could have ended differently. It really could have had a different story. But they didn't have any language for mental health back then. So she's defined as crazy and maniacal and imbalanced. And I'm hoping to find moments of joy and um, deep insecurity, but a humanity that the audience at the end will go, oh, Crap, I wish this could have ended differently. Sunset Boulevard, tempting Boulevard, waiting there to swallow the unwary. So tell me a little bit more about the Stephanie J. Block of it all. This is dream casting. She's singing the crap out of this role. Correct. Hearing her thoughts about the process, really delving into the love story that is Joe and Norma, yeah. which I feel like in previous productions, um, it's, it's a crazy story with so many elements that uh, some of that gets lost. I mean, this, it's this woman who, who was coming back trying to, trying to have this great like second, second wave of her career. And, and they, honestly, there is this like really passionate love story between the two of them be before things go sour. So I think we've really tried to harness that and watching her assume this, this title character is, is crazy. And I have the best seat of the house, of course. I get to slow dance, I get to waltz with 70 J Block as Norma Desmond. People have been waiting for you to do a musical. I've been waiting for you to do this. The internet has been waiting, and meanwhile, I'm scared shitless. Are you excited? Yes, yes, I, I truly am. I feel it in like the pit of my stomach that I am scared, very excited, but I know that that means I'm in the right place because it's just a new medium. Like I've now gotten used to TV and film, which is very like here, and Broadway's here. So <laughs> uh, it's just, it's new. Every movie's a circus on the wire without a net. Coffee. I'm up too early, shooting at seven. I gotta go. Movies. And what about the Hollywood lingo, and especially your character? Yeah. There's Norma Desmond, but there's a whole bunch of stuff about sort of the young people in Hollywood trying to make it. Yes, yeah. And so, you know, those are struggles that we as, as young artists sort of identify with. So that's that's kind of an easy thing to tap into, but there's a lot of just like general lexicon that goes like the vocabulary of the business that of that era specifically um, that they've given us like a good glossary of you know folks that we may not know Adolf Manjou and some of these these odd characters that you know are less familiar to my generation. Yeah. But it's it's been it's been like a really interesting learning experience. And this is a movie that became a musical about classic old Hollywood, and you get to play a titan of old Hollywood. Tell me about that. He's an iconic character, uh, an iconic director. Yeah. He was the preeminent director of his yeah. time for decades and did hundreds of films. Yeah. I mean, he really did have power yeah. over everything. 
You get to do this a great, amazing scene with Stephanie J. Block, and you did it with Glenn Close on Broadway as well. Totally different. Totally different. Totally different. Totally different. But yeah. Stephanie's great casting. She is. She is bringing similar characteristics to Glenn and the other great women who've played this role in that she has, she's a force of nature. Yeah. She's a force of nature. But she has a totally different personality, and she's bringing, I think, a lot more humor to it. And I think she's going to be amazing in yeah. the role. I really do. You're playing Max, yes. who is historically bald. Yeah, I don't Are get you a shaving point. your head in the next week? No, they asked me. No. <laughs> <laughs> new Max, you know, he's, he's stays in shape. He does yoga in the morning. Yeah, the new Max is pretty dashed. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. And when he sings, especially in your hands, oh, yeah. it's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the second piece particularly. Like Aria. It's like a little Aria. It is, it is a little Aria. Yeah. yeah, well, that's what's so interesting about Andrew Lloyd Webber, right? He's somewhere between classic musical theater yeah. and modern musical theater. And I'm starting to find out where that is. You can do things with your voice because you're amplified, yeah. but you just can't do on big stages. Yeah. You can sing it, and you can, like, full-throated stuff, yeah. and then bring it back to... A whisper. Every time I see a young king dreaming they'll produce a masterpiece, I just want to throw them on the next ring. So what you're telling me is you're in the show as yeah. a Tony-nominated Broadway star, and you're also in the show as a Broadway fan just like looking at your co-stars watching I mean, how could you not be? I mean, especially like this is my first time doing uh, Angel Lloyd Webber professionally. Uh -huh. I grew up doing a lot of Josephs. I played almost every brother growing up. Sure. But this is like my first time as a, an adult singing an Angel Lloyd Webber score and, and probably my favorite of his. Yeah. And so to be playing Joe Gillis along with this crazy cast, I mean, yeah, I'm kind of geeking out. What is it like learning this music? I mean, this is a sort of a big operatic Broadway Andrew Lloyd Webber score. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the music is absolutely stunning. Um, and what I'm realizing is I've, I've worked so much on my belt that this is also a new area, technically, like truly speaking technically, for my voice. And so it's so many new experiences, but um, we just listened to Stephanie sing on the other side and God, the score, every time she sings that song of um, We'll Never Say Goodbye, like it just it brings me to tears every time. It's great to see her in her element. I, I, I'm blown away. These songs, I, I, I'm a big Andrew Lloyd Webber fan. Me too. Is it fun to get the opportunity to put your stamp on some of these songs that we've heard so many it's fantastic so performers thrilling. do? It really is thrilling. And I have, of course, immersed myself in Glenn and Betty and Patty. And even though there is a common thread, their voices, all of them, are so singular that it really is a different storytelling depending on the placement, the tone, the emotional, you know, weight that is being held when they're singing, that it allowed me a sort of sense of freedom to say, it's okay, it's okay. You can blend and do what you need to do, Steph, to make this happen and make it right for you. This world. 